Well, hello, Chewbacca and C-3PO. This is my counterpart, R2-D2. Oh, my God. These are too big. If only I had something a lot smaller to play with, that would be a whole lot more fun. Mm. Oh, what? What is this? It's the Star Wars Micro Collection from Kenner. The what? It's the Star Wars Micro Collection. The Star Wars Micro Collection from Kenner? They're so small. And they're so cute. But come on, I can't just play with action figures. It's a mini Millennium Falcon, just like Han Solo had in the movie Star Wars. Thank you, Kenner, this is so much fun. Stand there, you big furry oak, I don't care what you smell. Hey everybody, it's the Junk Man back here in the junk room. What are we going to talk about today? The Kenner Star Wars Micro Collection. It ran from 1982 to some of 1983. A very short line. Kenner canceled it after just one year. Why? Why didn't people want these fantastic little toys? We'll get into that. But before we get into that, let's do some plugs. Help me make junk better. Support us at Patreon. You'll get discounts on shirt, an exclusive podcast. Sometime. I'm working on doing more of those. You'll get videos early, like this one. You'll get outtakes. You'll get a whole bunch of stuff. Blogs, all kinds of stuff. Just go to patreon.com slash Star Wars Junk. The link will be in the description below. If you want some t-shirts that you can't find at Walmart or Kroger, don't worry, we got them. We got all kinds of shirts from closed department stores. The toy logo shirts, Star Wars shirts. We even got weird shirts like this. So if you want to help us out, support us at Patreon, or if you just want to get some cool t-shirts, go to StarWarsJunk.net. Let's get out of here, Han Solo. Careful, Skywalker. Introducing Death Star World, two play sets in one, new from Star Wars Micro Collection line. 14 die-cast figures and action poses included. Death Star Escape has an elevator and a cannon that explodes. Wow, it connects to Death Star Compactor. It's you and me, Ben Kenobi. What's this? Oh, no! The wall! Run for it! Beat it! Death Star World from Star Wars Micro Collection line. Playsets also sold separately. Figures included. New from Kenner. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, the Micro Collection was a failed toy line. It only lasted about a year. It had a lot of products in that year. But why didn't this toy line take off? I mean, look at it. Well, we're going to get into why I think it didn't sell. I'm no marketing expert. I wasn't at the board meetings at Kenner, so I can't really tell you inside information of why it didn't sell, but I think I got a pretty good reason why it didn't. Before we talk about why it failed, let's look at the line. The Death Star Compactor. This is the part of the film with the trash compactor. It even has a trash compactor that comes with it, with some little foam in it, just like the Kenner Star Wars Death Star. This one here came with eight figures. It's a nice little set. Comes with this big old cannon gun, and it's probably one of the toughest of the Death Star to find. Not the toughest, but it's very hard to find. Next up, you have the Death Star Escape. I don't know what it was with Kenner, but they love calling stuff the Death Star Escape. This one here is a much smaller playset, and it only came with six action figures. Action figures. I don't know if you can call them action figures. They're little die cast pieces of metal. They're not really action. And to round out the Death Star, you have the Death Star World. Wait a minute, how's it an action world? Shouldn't it be the Death Star Action Space Station playset? Maybe that was too worried to get on the box. I guess it is kind of a world. It's kind of like a small moon. But what this playset did is give you one new feature and it took the two other Death Stars and put them together. Combine them, instead of buying all three, you could just buy this one, set it up, and you got the Death Star. Although they sat out long way, I think it would have been much better if they found a way to stack this playset so you would have it higher, kind of more like the Death Star. Or maybe it was round when you hooked them all together. That would have been a neat little choice. And this one is by far the rarest. I hardly ever see this one in a good condition and boxed. But it's out there if you're looking for it. So let's get into The Empire Strikes Back and let's start on Hoth. Let's start with the most boring one of all, the Hoth Generator Attack. 
That's right, you can attack the generator just like in The Empire Strikes Back. And this one came with six figures. However, five of those figures were snow troopers. But hey, it came with a scout walker. So that's something, right? It's a nice little set. It's probably the most boring set of at least all the Hoth, maybe out of the whole line. And up next you have the Hoth Ion Cannon. Everybody remembers the Ion Cannon from the movie, right? Now you can play like you're firing off an Ion Cannon. What's an Ion Cannon? I don't know what an Ion is. Maybe some of you geeks out there can tell me exactly what an Ion is. I'm sure it stands for something. And this one came with eight die-cast figures, and it's the biggest toy of the line. And it's pretty fun and cool. If you're starting to collect this line, pick this one up soon. Because once you see it and get it all out of the box and on your toy shelf and everything, believe me, you'll want the rest of the line. And out of the eight figures, the coolest is you get a Han Han Rhyme of Tan Tan. And up next, the Halt Turret Defense. This one here comes with six more diecast figures, and for some reason, it has Luke Skywalker on his Tauntaun. That doesn't rhyme as good as Han. Luke Luke Tauntaun. No, that doesn't really sound right. We only really see Luke Skywalker riding his Tauntaun at the very start of the film for a few seconds or minutes. He's never at the Halt base riding his Tauntaun, but yet we put him in the playset. Hey, we were kids. We didn't complain. We were just happy to have a diecast Tauntaun with a little beady Luke Skywalker on top of it. Next up for the Planet Hoth, the Hoth Wampa Cave. Now this is one of the ones I remember having as a kid, and I love this thing. Although it really doesn't do much, and it's only one hunk of plastic. But you can hang Luke Skywalker upside down in the Wampa Cave, and it has a probe droid. So to me, as a kid, I love playing with this. And at the end of the day, isn't that what matters if it was fun to play with as a kid? And I said it came with a probe droid, but it also came with a die-cast Wampa. And to finish up the Hoth set, we have the Hoth World playset. It comes with 19 die-cast figures. 19. Yeah, you heard me right. I didn't say 17. I didn't say 18. I said 19 die-cast figures. Again, this is taking some of the Hoth playsets, combining them into one huge playset. But for some reason, the turret set is not part of this set. What gives, Kenner? Maybe it was to cut the price down, man. There were so many of the Hoth playsets. Not really sure. So let's leave Hoth and head over to Lando. A Lando system? No, Lando's not a system. Lando's a man. And he lives on Bespin at Cloud City. So let's look at the Micro Machine collection of Bespin. First up, and I think I had all these as a kid, or most of them. I really did love this line. First up, the Bespin Control Room. It came with four die-cast figures. And you feel a little cheated because it came with two Darth Vader's and two Luke's. But you could use one of the Luke's to make him fly out of a broken window. Now if that doesn't sound cool, what does? Making a Luke Skywalker sling itself out of a window. Greatest toy ever created. Watch what happens to Luke. Next up, we're going to get a little cold with the Bestman Freezing Chamber and eight diecast figures. Not only do you get a die-cast figure of Han Solo and Carbonite, I mean, that's one of the coolest things ever. I always love when there's a Han Solo and Carbonite in the box. I always love when you can buy a Han Solo and Carbonite, from action figures to cell phone cases to whatever. If you put Han and Carbonite, stick it on a store shelf, I'll buy it. And I love the die-cast Han Solo. But that's not even the best figure of the set, because I think we all know who the best die-cast figure of this set is. Boba Fett. Finally, a die-cast Boba Fett. But you know what? Boba Fett's not even the best die-cast figure of this set. Who is? Lobot. Why Lobot? Because look at him. He's doing some kind of disco dance pointing thing like John Travolta would do in Stand Alive. I don't know why they put him in this pose. But we got a die-cast Lobot. Could you ask for anything more? Oh, you do want more. Well, this playset has something that none of the other micro collection playsets have. In fact, I can't think of any other playset that has this. At the very top of this playset, it has a staircase that leads to nowhere. Why did they put it right here and just a little section of it? It goes nowhere. I know what you're thinking. Once you hook it to the Bestman world, then the steps will come in handy. Nope. Still, just steps to nowhere. Maybe it's a stairway to heaven. Hmm. 
stairway to heaven. Very good, old chum. Other than having a stairway to heaven, I'm not really sure of the whole reason for putting this on here. Now we're up to the Bethman Gantry. I don't even know what a gantry is, but it was fun to play with, and again, it came with only four diecast figures, two Lukes, two Vaders. So, so far, we have four Vaders, four Lukes, all dressed the same. Come on, Kenner. You could at least snug him some Ugg nuts into this thing. But hey, one of the diecast Lukes come with one hand. So that's pretty neat. So it's always fun to have a one-handed Luke Skywalker to play with. And to round it off, the Bespin World. Again, hooking all the play sets together, you have the Bespin World. And 16 diecast action figures. Back in 1982, this world cost $35. Now I know what you're thinking, man. That's not that bad, $35. Well, thanks to some adding machines down at the bank, and they've got some really good adding machines down at the bank, $35 in 1982 equals to $90 in 2018. Can you imagine this thing costing $90? Whew. But then again, if Hasbro made this today, it would be a Toys Us exclusive. It would be $299. Hasbro. Hmm. Okay, it seems those steps do now go somewhere. To a small platform above a door. Now we're finished with the play sets, but we're not finished with the micro collection. I know you're saying, Junkman, how can you not be done? This was a one-year toy that didn't last long and it failed on the market. How can you have so much? Well, I can say Kenner didn't hold back with this line. They gave it all they can and pushed it out there in 1982 to try to make it a huge hit. And one thing they did to get kids to buy this, you could build your own army. With two proofs of purchase, you could send off and get six diecast figures, three Rebel Hoth Troopers, three Snow Troopers. So you could add them to your Hoth fight. Now I know what you're thinking. Six figures isn't really an army, but hey, with just two proofs of purchase, you could send off and get more. You could really build an army with these. So what do you have besides your play sets and your army? Well, of course you got ships. So let's talk about ships. First up, this one right here. I'm missing the radar as you can see, and the door down here, and maybe some more things. But this one I actually has, so I can show you. It opens up, you've got a nice little cockpit in there. <coughs> cockpit. You got a nice little cockpit in there. Got a little gunner you can sit somebody. Look at that. It makes the same sound that the Kenner ship makes. So let's put him back down right here. This thing's always a pain to get back on. So we have the Millennium Falcon. This was a Sears exclusive. That's right. You only could get it at Sears. It came with six diecast figures, one of them being Luke Skywalker and none of them being Princess Leia. Now, I admit I haven't watched The Empire Strikes Back in about three or four hours. But if I'm right, Princess Leia spends probably about 85-90% of the movie in the Falcon. Luke Skywalker spends probably about 2% of the movie in the Falcon. Why didn't they give us a Princess Leia in the Falcon? Good old 86 sexism Females don't sell! That's not sexist. And now why would Sears only have the Falcon? I mean, this had to be one of the best toys out there. This had to be one of the toys Kid wanted the most. Seems odd to make the Falcon an exclusive. Well, like many things with Sears, they would get it first as an exclusive, and then they would release it to the market. The plan was to release the Falcon in 1983 to everyone else outside of Sears. But sadly, like I said, the line was canceled. And if you didn't get your Falcon through Sears, you didn't get your Falcon. Next up is another exclusive, and it comes from J.C. Penny, the J.C. Penny Snowspeeder, and you got two diecast figures, two Rebel pilots to fit into your Snowspeeder. That was pretty cool, and this is by far the rarest of the micro ships, and it, like the other ships we're going to talk about, has a breakaway feature where you hit a button and it breaks apart. Let you take a look at it a little longer. Now, let's talk about a ship that's not an exclusive, the TIE Fighter. And it came with one diecast figure, a TIE Fighter pilot. Not really surprising there. It also had the breakaway feature where you hit a button and the whole ship collapsed and your grandma almost has a heart attack right there thinking you just wasted her money and broke a toy she just bought you 10 minutes ago. But you just say, ha ha, gotcha granny, and you let go of the button and the ship comes back to life. What a great feature. And it wasn't fun just to tease your grandma. 
It was fun to have the other ships flying after it and shooting it out of the sky, watching it crumble into pieces. It's a nice little feature they had. I like that they add that. It gave a little bit more play value to these little diecast toys. And to round out the ships, we had the X-Wing with a diecast Luke Skywalker X-Wing pilot. I wish it came with a diecast R2-D2. Of course, he's molded into the ship, but it would have been nice if they had a removable R2-D2. And like the TIE Fighter and Snowspeeder, it had a breakaway part to scare your grandma. Now, these two were also released in a box that came with a backdrop that you would place behind the ships when you, I guess, sit it on your toy shelf or something. It was a nice little extra, but I don't think it would have done anything to help kids want to buy this toy line. So that's it. That's the micro collection from Kenner from 1982. But they did have plans for 1983. In fact, they had big plans. There's a whole slew of blueprints, molds, and figures and stuff they had for the Return of the Jedi line. So we're not going to touch base on every one of those. I'm, we're only going to take a look at the ones that were very close to being reality. First up, we have some from the Empire Strikes Back line that didn't make it to the stores. First would have been a Dagobah playset. And two more Bespin ones, a Bacteria Chamber, which looks pretty fun. And the Bespin Torture Chamber. The Bacteria Chamber and the Torture Chamber would have came with four diecast figures. But let's look at Return of the Jedi. First up, we have the Death Star Throne Room. We probably would have got a little diecast emperor sitting in a little bitty chair. That would have been worth 20 bucks right there. The Jawa Bowler Room. And one that probably would have been the best of the line, the Jabba Throne Room. We would have got a die-cast Jabba. Now that is something I would really have loved. But I didn't get a Jabba Throne Room to play with. But that's a look at the micro collection. What we had and what we didn't have. I really wish this line would have done more and we would at least have seen Return of the Jedi. But sadly, like I said, the toys didn't sell. But why didn't they sell? First up, let's look at them. They look really good sitting on a shelf. Any collector will love them having them set it up. But for kids, they're really not that much fun to play with. Sure, they're fun, but we have the Kenner action figure line to compete with. It's hard to compete. And these figures were selling by the millions. So you had to ask your parents, hey, I know you're buying me Star Wars figures, but here's some more Star Wars figures. Some parents might have felt like this was just a cash grab. Hey, we made large ones, now let's make smaller ones. So that might would have turned some parents off. So when it was Christmas time or a birthday, they were probably already spending their money on the action figure line. But I don't think that's exactly what killed it. I think what killed it was timing. This came in 1982, two years after the release of Empire Strikes Back. Now, unlike today, you couldn't wait three months after its release and rush home with a video copy of The Empire Strikes Back. By 1982, kids were kind of forgetting about Empire, and the toy aisle was actually starting to hurt Star Wars thanks to Mattel's release of He-Man The Masters of the Universe. So I think if this line came out with the release of the film in 1980, I think they would have sold decent. Now I'm not saying they would have been as big hit as the action figure, but I would have thought they would have done well. If they kept going into 1983 with the release of Return of the Jedi, they might have could have picked up some steam as kids were getting back into Star Wars thanks to a new film, but Kenner, as I said, canceled the line before the release of Return of the Jedi. If you don't have this line and you're a vintage collector, start looking into it. It's a very good line, and as you can see here, it looks really good sitting up on display. This is one line I would not recommend getting in the box. Now, if you just want to collect stuff in the box or you're looking for value later on, of course, the box stuff's going to be worth more. But if you're looking for a collection you can put up, say, on a toy shelf or in a junk room somewhere, this is the collection you want. Sure, the action figures look good standing up and everything, but as soon as you sneeze, they're going to fall over. These are pretty little steady guys. See that? They're not going to fall down. These look really good in toy rooms is what I'm saying. So if you're thinking about collecting this line, really think about if you want loose or box, because loose is going to look really good. But I want to thank you for watching. Again, please support us at Patreon. You'll get a lot of exclusives there. and The link's going to be down at the bottom. And you can buy one of our t-shirts at StarWarsJunk.net. And that is the rest of the story. Good.
day. Next on an all new Facts of Life, it's Tootie's big day and you're invited to share her happiness and memories on a very special Facts of Life. Then on an all new Golden Girls, Blanche is practicing her curtsy because her big daddy's coming to town and the girls are singing the blues. Then Sandra and Mary are at it again on an all new 227, followed by Remington Steele. Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>